Let's continue with stories around COVID-19. Infections are steadily rising in South Africa. Last night, in fact, more than 6,000 new cases were reported by the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. The race is now on to study the latest infections to re-establish, uh, to establish what is causing the spike. CRISP Director, Professor Tulio de Oliveira, uh, joins us now to discuss this further. Thank you so much, Prof, for your time here on ENCA. Firstly, is, are these numbers being driven still by the Omicron variant? Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, so basically these numbers are being driven by, by Omicron. It's still Omicron. It, but it's two different new lineages, yeah, which we, which we have described both here at the NCA and also by Nicholas Crisp and the Minister of Health. They are called the BA4 mm. and the BA5. So it's two new lineages of Omicron, um, the variant of concern, which seem to, to be more transmissible and potentially breaking through some immunity especially immunity of just like previous infection, yeah? And that's just to highlight that, that in order to, to stop these waves to come in South Africa, we're going to have to build population immunity on, on top of, of vaccinations because that's the ones that are much more long-lasting, yeah? Mm. Uh, Prof, is there any need for us to panic at the moment as a country, um, you know, seeing 5,000, 6,000 new infections? Should we panic, especially looking at the fact that uh, the Omicron variant was more, uh, you know, it did spread more, but people didn't get sick to the point of the hospitals being under pressure. So um, should we relax for now? So, so first, I don't think that's reason to panic because anyway, panic do not help in the in the response. Yeah, at the moment we are in a we are in a good phase of the pandemic, at least from South Africa. What it means, yeah, we have empty hospitals, so the hospitals can get a lot of carrying capacity in case people start developing disease and need hospitalizations. We do not see a big signal on increase of hospitalization and deaths. Yeah, and we have very effective. Um, vaccines and population immunity through vaccines and previous infections. So instead of panicking, the, the, the best thing to do is, is, is very calmly and rationally, yeah, make sure that, that we increase the vaccination, especially on the people that are likely to get in, uh, sick, like all the people, people that immune suppress or they that have uh, or the disease that may increase the chance of being hospitalized, yeah. And make sure that, 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 that our hospitals are prepared, that we have good wards and that we have good, good, good clinical management, which, which South Africa at the moment do has the time to prepare. Yeah, and, and more important, there is enough vaccines in the country that if you give a push on the, on the vaccination now, yeah, that, that would really, really make sure that this wave, it is not more uh, drastic and do not cause unnecessary deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, and thank you. Um, does it also have anything to do, Professor, with this season? For instance, I sneeze quite a bit more during this time. I get the fever every time um, the season changes between April and May and again uh, August, September. So um, is that also playing a factor? So, so the seasonality of the virus is become quite clear. Eh? These waves, they, they go uh, around like four, uh, they start four months after the, the other one uh, has finished, yeah. And we're gonna, we're gonna be going to our 50 wave in South Africa. That's gonna be the third wave that, that happened in the winter. And you had two waves in the summer, yeah. Mm. The, the most important thing as we learn more about this, why the seasonality is that from previous infection, yeah, you have a fast decrease of immunity after three months. And if you don't boost that immunity with vaccine, then these new waves will keep coming after the immunity of the population is lower. So that's a lot associated with the seasonality and why we have these very waves coming uh, uh, four months after the other one finish. Mm -hmm. And of course, I think those booster shots, perhaps, uh, uh, Prof. Uh, Tulio, are important right now uh, for us to make sure that our immunity goes back where we need it.
Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got, uh, I got boosted. Yeah, um, <laughs> last week, we got all our lab boosted. Yeah, <laughs> we normally get quite busy during during these waves. Yeah, and 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 just to plead for the population, uh, we all want to go back to normal. Yeah, the restrictions are very low. Yeah, and 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 that's the way to get out of this pandemic. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be other way. Hmm. Well, thank you so much for speaking to me, Professor Tulio uh, de Oliveira. They're speaking to us about the fact that uh, uh, the increase in numbers is driven by the Omicron variant. But I think what's important to take from what he said is there's no need to panic.